And just like Slim Shady or Fatboy Slim, we are back once again with both the ill behavior and a new episode of Between Two Bones. Uh, I'm right. Marcello. I'm Dan McInerney, the threat researchers here yes. at Protect AI. And we're gonna hopefully talk about vulnerabilities, but if not, I mean, that's just it's kind how of we roll. On our head. It's fine. Uh, Dan, what do you wanna, okay, so, so I'm actually really excited about this episode. Okay. Because we have two special segments that we're gonna get to. Uh, one special segment is going to be a Dan doing a little show and tell. So we've decided not to kill your brain cells this time well, with this episode. Well, well we're going to grow some brain cells. Depends on hopefully. how much they put in the video after post. Yeah, never so, really up yeah, to us. Okay, yeah. yes. So I will get started on this segment on how you actually reproduce these vulnerabilities that you're seeing in uh, Hunter.com. But the actual title of the segment is show and tell with Dan, and then Nick can put, put like some Sesame Street stuff here. That's right. It's also brought to you by the letter I because we've decided that we're finally going to actually make some content. Yes, and I stands for informative, which is my favorite hunter status. So that's why it's brought to you by the letter <laughs> I. Um, go, so yes, please. Okay, continue. so we're going to start off. Uh, the theme of this whole episode is going to be no longer uh, the single maintainer projects with vulnerabilities in them, because what we see a lot of is tons of these cutting edge AI tools are just built by like a single person who had a side project to make his life easier or her life easier, and they just release it to the world. It becomes very popular. However, this, this issue we're seeing in the supply chain of AI is not just relegated to these single solo project developers. Uh, it's also affecting kind of like some of the big boys. So today we're gonna look at Triton Inference Server, which is uh, a project in the NVIDIA repository. They've had a couple issues in the past with like remote code execution, and Triton's really, really interesting. So to give you some background, Triton's an inference server. If you don't know what that is, it's essentially an API server that you attach a model to, and then you send API calls to use the model. It's, it's how you share the model with the world. And Triton Inference Server is probably one of the most popular in the world, if yes. not the most popular. But I, I can't say that for sure, so I'll say probably. It's also super popular because it's optimized for the AI NVIDIA chips. Correct. Which is probably the biggest thing about it. Yeah, because like, I mean, technically, you could just have any API, like fast API yeah, or something, yeah. and serve like, your model. Bento, but this is, yeah, this yeah. is optimized for it. So what we have here is an arbitrary file creation slash appending in log file configuration interface can lead to remote code execution. It's a, it's a mouthful here, but basically what you're doing is overriding an arbitrary file using Triton Inference Server. And what I love about this is that Triton is like basically meant to be pushed to the edge meaning it's supposed to be interacted with by a large audience. So you'll put this outside your firewall or you'll open up the firewall so people outside can hit this model. But this is essentially uh, a tool that will sometimes get you past a firewall if it's publicly exposed, which many of them are. It's equivalent of a web server, really, like, like a traditional mm -hmm. like Apache web server. Yeah. yeah. All right, so this one, the way this works is you just make this curl request and it goes to Log, it says the root, the log file is in root.bashrc. So really this root.bashrc can be any file on the file system. And then you just run all this other stuff that no one cares about. The actual uh, vulnerability is right here in this log file. So what this does is it creates a new file. You're telling Triton, hey, create a log file in this location. And Triton goes, okay, that sounds good. Then you write an attack command to that log file. And the way this works, in order to get actual remote code execution through this, you'd have to overwrite something that automatically gets interpreted by bash. In this case, .bashrc is an excellent choice. Anytime someone logs in, bashrc gets executed by bash. So we overwrite bashrc with our own command. Next time someone logs in, our command is run. Super easy method to hack an organization and get their models and their data and all the permissions from the, yep. the machine learning engineer. The, the problem is, what I think a lot of people in the bug hunting community have an issue with is how do you start running these tools? Like, how do I even start Triton? Correct. Sometimes this is just a huge barrier to entry where you're like, you start running some commands and the errors pop up and you're like, I give up, I'm gonna yeah. do something else. The secret ingredient here is crime. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's actually Docker. It's, 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 the keys are like right no, next to each a, other, it's crime, a, it's, Docker. It's Docker. Docker is uh, like, it's the sort of like the, like the, what is it, the life hack when it comes to standing up these tools. Yeah, but pretty much everything in our bug bounty program yeah. ha has a Docker container somewhere and you just Correct. download the Docker and you run the Docker and there, all your problems are solved. No more installation dependency issues and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you how this works. This is what the proof of concept looks like. Shout out to uh, uh, Kiruwaliyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawiyawi
that's yeah. I think we got that right. I'm so sorry, but um, also I'm not sorry. But also to I'll Ed Pang and Sangform. So this is super interesting. I'm gonna show you how to hook up Burp Suite to to a curl request, and then I'm also gonna show you how to stand up Docker using Triton because this proof of concept actually is not very easy to reproduce as it is. Now to all the hunters out there, mm -hmm. what I'm gonna show you, this is the perfect proof of concept. Let me show you. This is what it looks like. Right here. This, this is the perfect proof of concept. Is this, like this is step-by-step -step instructions on not only starting the service, but then running the service and doing the proof of concept like exploit itself. This is perfection right this here. This is perfection. It's perfection. What you're gonna do is first pull down the Triton server uh, Docker image, and you're gonna wanna make sure that you're using the actual vulnerable version. In this case, the vulnerable, ver vulnerable version is 24.03. So we'll just make that little change. You do Docker pull, I've already done that. Then you do Docker images to see the image ID, and then you run the Docker container. That's gonna be right here. So I'll just copy and paste this. I'll come on over here. And before I do that, well, yeah. uh, I need to do Docker images. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's it's very it's very big, so that's nice. Yeah. I guess. Where is the? Where is? You can grep it. Can you? What, what are we looking for? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> there yeah. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Triton okay. server. And then we'll just pop that ID right there, and it starts up. Here we are. Now we're inside the Docker container. This is essentially like a little, kind of like a virtual image, essentially. Yeah. More again, or less. Like Someone will yell at me for that analogy, but. And the best part about this is go that, to hell. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah fair enough. And, and, but but in any case, like the best part about this, you don't have to worry about dependencies or installing anything. Because yeah. It's, it's all installed for you. You just basically run that Docker run command. And if you don't know how to do this, I mean, just ask ChatGPT too. Yeah. So we have run it. We're inside of it. Now we're going to run Triton. So we'll do Triton server slash slash model repository is, I don't know, temp. All right, now Triton is running. So Triton is running with three interfaces open, and now we can background this, and we can check the temp folder. Nothing in the temp folder, we okay. see. All right, now let's start doing the commands, which are gonna be And this is, of course not. Well, that's a that's that's a nice command. Let's right just there. go back to oh, this, okay. and we'll copy this. This is the proof of concept, and we're going to actually hook this up to Burp. So we'll just get rid of this. Oops. And we have a curl request. Uh, in order to actually hook this up to Burp, we're going to add. I know there's a fat. There we go. Curl dash x. HTTP colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 mm -hmm. 8080. And now you know I'm a hacker because I have Burp Suite Professional. Oh. That's how you know I'm a professional. Oh, damn. So now that's a weird flex. Burp Suite runs on port 8080. We're going to hook curl up to Burp Suite and then we'll run the proof of concept. There we go. Okay. So it should have been captured right here. It sure was. There it is. Now we can reproduce this and do attacks. Like, mm -hmm. you know, right click, act, do active scan or whatever. We have overwritten the dot bash RC. I don't know if we've overwritten it yet. We might have just created a blank one. Uh, oh, wait, no, you're in the wrong terminal. Oh, yeah. You're in, yeah, there you go. Batch RC. Batch RC. Whatever, it's just the batch RC. Yeah. Then we'll do the second stage of this, which is to write a command to that batch RC. So just to explain, this is basically going to append basically just some a command to the actual file, right? Correct. So okay. you're essentially adding a log to the log file, but okay. the log file in this case is .bashrc. So we're going to append uh, the id command to a root command result. And I guess we'll pop this into burp suite as well. curl dash x http equals dash dash one two seven dot zero zero dot zero dot zero dot. Oh my god. Numbers are hard. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You get, yeah, get it. Yeah, there you go. That's good. That's a good number. Okay. Okay, so we get a nice 404 not found. Let's check burp. There it is. Okay. That's fine. Whatever. Let's see if it actually worked. We now want to do bash slash root dot bash rc. And what this is doing is simulating someone logging into this environment. As soon as we simulate the login, which would be bash running bash rc, it says, of course, it says no file. 
Oh, because you I'm know, in the yeah, wrong, terminal wrong terminal again. again. You're right. This is, this is, see, this is. Dot dash RC. Great. Okay. And then okay. we hit LS. Interesting. Oops, go to root. And then command we see result. command result. There you go. Cat, command result. There's the Hacks. UID. Hacks. He's, we just he, hacked. He just hacked the Gibson, just hacked the thing. firewall, everything. That's amazing. Everything. So this and is the this is the simplest way, I guess, of doing a, of standing up a lot of these servers and then interacting with them. You just make an API call, you come to burp, you see where the API calls are going, and then you just start messing with them by hitting things like uh, send to repeater. And now you can start checking for vulnerabilities and stuff or repeating yeah. commands. There is an easier way also to do this. If you, like, let's say MLflow is a little bit easier. MLflow, you can just end up doing uh, a pip environment or a Python. Of course, there's not anything here. You can just do a, like a virtual environment. So in this case, we're going to install MLflow env in a virtual environment, which I already did. We're going to activate it. We're going to install it, and we're going to run it. PyEnd activate. Pip install MLflow. It says it was already there, and then we just run it, MLflow UI. Now I have the service running, and I can go to burp, and this is actually a handy little tip. When you go to proxy and then intercept, you can hit open browser. This opens up a browser that's already hooked up to burp suite, yeah, and now is, I yes. can go to localhost uh, 5000, if I ever spell anything correctly. No, I mean, it's fine. Like, that's what the LLM's for. There you go. And, and there, then now all of this is hooked up to burp. We Perfect. just come on heading over to HTTP history, and there's our other stuff. We can start attacking this service as well. So these are the two easiest methods yeah. of starting off the attacks inside of Hunter.com. Yeah. And so ends the part of the show where we actually improve your knowledge, <laughs> and now we're going to destroy it. Yeah, 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 there you go. Oh, there's, I'm sorry, there's a couple more No, there's a couple too. more. Like, that's okay, not, that's okay. not like end the whole, you know, actually educational content yet. Right, right. Um, all right, so we got, so shout out. So this was discovered by Krua and Gang. Uh, because there's multiple multiple people associated with this. Uh, there's also uh, one that I found was really interesting, which is also actually found by Kirua. So double shout out to Kirua, yeah. Kirua here. Really good. Um, not not often do we see memory cover corruption vulnerabilities on Hunter. Like it's it's like I think there's been like three or four of them. Yeah. Out of all the submissions that we got, so it's always nice to have have an old school memory corruption bug. And they actually found some memory corrupt a memory corruption primitive uh, out of bounds right. In again, Triton. So again, this is like super. This is super impactful because why is it super impactful? Oh no, because, because it's it, a very popular because it's a project. very popular project. <laughs> My brain stopped working there for a second. Uh, it's a very popular project. And then again, it's like the equivalent of like a web server. So like it'll always be on the perimeter of organizations. And like if you find a memory corruption bug and you're able to exploit it remotely, that's kind of a big deal. Now this one's a pretty um, advanced one. So like most yeah. of the findings that we have, most of the reports we get, they're going to be API. To, to me, API security is AI security. In this case, uh, they found a much lower level one. And yeah. I think there's plenty of room for these vulnerabilities. I think just a lot of people don't know how to find lower level yeah, corruption true. ones. They take a little longer to discover to fuzz yeah. a little harder to do yeah that's true but it's worth it though because again like in they got paid well, how much how much was the bounty on this 125 okay well uh, we can cut that out but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um but yeah no no but it's a, it's a it's a great great finding great finding by uh kiro um and then finally uh, final shout out and then we get into a second special segment here uh the arbitrary file reading via sql injection in a, oh, another neural compressor SQL engine, because this is like the third one, I think. There's been a we, few of them. There's been a few of so them. we had NVIDIA, now we're looking at an Intel product. Yes. And this one's not nearly as popular as the uh, Triton no, Infant Server. However, yeah. it's interesting that it's released by, it, this is not a solo dev. You know? Yeah, this, this is, is backed a, like, by an organization. backed by Intel. So, I mean, this is, it's, kind of, it's sort of a big deal. Um, and uh, this person, CyberX, shout out, oh no, Will, Willy Wallow. Shout out to Willy Wallow. A AKA CyberX, um, for finding a SQL injection in a, oh, the task submit API endpoint of neural compressor, neural solution server. Uh, we've actually had a couple other reports targeting this endpoint as well. Uh, and he found yet, he or she found yet another one, uh, which is always good to see because yeah. That's that's a very popular project. How many stars is it actually? Like two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. No well, compressor is like a way of just compressing, uh, I think, model files or something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And, and it's again, got like a task orchestrator. It's got. I mean, it's weird. It's a. It's a weird. It's. It's kind of a weird project. Like it said, they they've rebuilt a whole like task orchestration tool. Like I don't know why they didn't use Celery or something. I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I have. I generally just about life in general, not necessarily like this. But I'm just confused. And this is another issue you're just going to find through Burp. You stand yeah. up the service either through a virtual environment or a Docker container, probably a Docker container, and then just start making API calls, capture them in Burp either using curl or just by repeating what you see in the documentation and yeah. fuzzing these parameters. Oftentimes, an automated fuzz is all it takes because, again, the, a lot of people think the barrier to entry to, to installing these tools is kind of high. Yes. So if you can just get past that barrier to entry, Docker. You can, a lot of times you can just scan it and yep. money falling from the sky. Yeah, yeah, it's just Docker. Just just learn Docker. Just use it's Docker easy. and it's easy. and you're done. And this person got 2,500 bucks for this. So yeah, this, this is, is a pretty simple one, too. Simple I think one. this one might have been easy findable money through an automated scan yeah, like, by, yeah. with a default scan. 100%, yeah, so that's, that's really funny. All right, so I'm super excited for this segment. Mm, exactly. This is a new segment that we're introducing. Uh, it's, it's called Report Roast with Marcello. <laughs> so, and then Nick can add like either the roast intro or like, I don't know, some like Mark Zuckerberg roasting meats or something in like the background, yeah, we'll figure it out. In any case, <laughs> um, so okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna we're not gonna this isn't meant to like pick on an individual. Of course not. It's we're not, not bullies. We're gonna make we're gonna Very poke nice some fun, but Kind we're not souls. gonna like you know we're not gonna target we're not gonna show like who submitted these reports, but we're, it's actually meant to provide critical feedback because yes. the fact of the matter is we get a lot of reports. God knows we get plenty of critical feedback on our yeah, position. Yeah, yeah. So we'd like to give we do. So you know, some critical we like feedback. To return the favor. We like to return the favor. So. And we'll uh, pull the and we'll pull the report up because like okay. this is okay. So and again, we'll blur this out. But okay, so what's what's wrong with this report? What I think is happening here, yeah, is someone's running Sneak, correct, on the whole code base of these open source projects. Yeah, and Sneak comes back with ten thousand vulnerabilities, and mm -hmm. you go, "I'm a millionaire! I'm a millionaire!" Yes, that's what's happening. And then they report on each one of those. So the thing is, like, what, what is the, 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 you, okay, I'm not even mad about like, like you can submit like just flood hunter if you want with like report, automated reports. Like, but as long as the reports are valid, like, that's the thing. And they also yeah. have a proof of concept. Totally. Like, it's not about like the automation behind that. Like, you can automate finding vulnerabilities, sure. But like you need to provide a proof of concept. So this report right here doesn't have a proof of concept, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, what is it? What what else is like? There's no impact. Like we don't know. Like from our perspective, there's no, no context. Like, there's no context. We don't know what's going on here. Well, let's explain Wait. what the vulnerability is supposed to be. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. It's a temp file override. So if you use a certain kind of function when you create a temporary file, yeah, it'll create the file. And I think what happens is an attacker, if they have access to the hard drive, can read the file before you delete it or something like that. It's like it's a, it's a timing attack it's a timing where the attack. attacker yeah, yeah. already has to have high permissions yeah. on the server. So like an app application might write to like a write might write a sensitive file to yeah. a temporary it might write something sensitive to a temporary file, right, with wrong permissions. And then another program or like a malicious actor might be able to read that file yeah. before the application deletes it. So that's Generally, what yeah, what and like it, the kind of rule of thumb is like, have you ever seen a Metasploit module for a temporary file overwrite? Yeah, I don't think I have. And if I haven't seen that, then it's probably not a very practical yeah. attack. So I mean, so like again, like you can automate like bone reports and mission to hunter. We yeah, don't, but great. but you just gotta like give us, you gotta throw us a bone. You know, you gotta <laughs> give us like, you know, we gotta Some have context, a lot more context a here. Proof of concept. Proof of concept. Why this would apply? Exactly. And we would we would be happy to validate all of these. But in this case, like you know, like yeah. I said, letter I, informative, best 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 letter of the alphabet. Yep. And I think that's it. We're closing. That's it. All right. This one's out. Peace. So like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Oh, like and subscribe. Sorry. We've yeah, like it. Smash that fucking button. I almost missed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was close. That was close. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> Ready to spotlight your skills? Join the hunt on hunter.com.